Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Go ahead and write, um, you know, where you are, are, are listening from. Um, and, and I'd love to start seeing that move. So I'm in Seattle myself. Um, Arlington, Texas. Awesome. Hello from Austin. I, Pablo Picasso. I love I love the name. Guadalajara. Hey, Romel, how are you? Uh, it's nice. We've been seeing people, um, you know, in the in the section uh, coming in and out. And, um, you know, as this is all day, um, you know, please don't feel don't feel like you have to stay here the whole time. But of course, we would love for you to be here. Um, we are going to welcome people onto the stage as well to ask questions. Uh, we're even going to have opportunities throughout the day for people to introduce themselves to everybody. Um, so do please stick around and stay for that also. Um, so, so just a super quick background on, on TF Labs. Uh, so TF Labs has been around since 2017. Uh, we actually first started doing uh, conferences in 2018. Um, we, we launched the very first uh, TF blockchain conferences in Seattle. Um, and uh, what, we, what we do is we basically have, you know, we've had really amazing guests. Um, people like Anthony Pompliano have attended. Um, we've had the folks from Avalanche, we've had the folks from Chainlink, we've had the folks, you know, core developers from Ethereum. Um, you know, our, our goal is really to uh, make Web3 accessible to everybody. And so um, the, the purpose of this particular event is we essentially noticed that there are a lot of brands starting to get into NFTs. And, um, you know, some of them are trying to be very Web3 or very decentralized. Others are, you know, probably not doing the best job of even communicating what they're doing. Um, and look, we're of the point of view that we think that every brand is going to start selling or using NFTs if they start to thinking about it as inventory. Uh, in full transparency, uh, TF Labs has spun out a startup um, called Niftmint. And what Niftmint does is it helps brands um, get involved with um, NFTs and sell it. it it's a it's an NFT commerce infrastructure uh, overall. So um, again, so before we get started, um, we're going to do some things where we get active in the chat uh, as well. And for example, I'd love to ask everybody. Um, you know, uh, so the first I ask is where are you, where are you all from? You know, who here? If you're familiar, actually, how about this? Rank your familiarity with NFTs from a scale of a one to five. Um, so go ahead and put in the, so five being like, you're just a, pro, you're a super pro when it comes to NFTs, one being you're a, you know, you're a super noob when it comes to NFTs. And, um, and by the way, um, you know, there, there are probably very few people that are truly fives. So if you are a five, I want to talk to you. I want to even invite you on, onto the stage, um, you know, overall, uh, the other thing that we're going to be doing is we, we want to welcome you to ask questions as they come up, um, and put them in the chat. Uh, so please ask them in the chat and we'll try to answer them right away. The other thing that you can do too is you'll notice that there's a button that says Q&A. If you ask a question in that Q&A section, it'll save it. So it actually makes it a little bit um, easier uh, to join. Um, so Ahmed just asked, how can we invite other people to join? Um, it's really simple. F feel free to just share the link. So this is an open event where people come in. So if you just share the link at the top, um, people, you'll be able to invite others. We do want to encourage you to tweet about the event. We want to encourage you to invite other people to the event. And we want to encourage you to even take screenshots and, and just share out uh, the learnings, um, you know, uh, overall. The last kind of call it um, housekeeping type of thing, um, and and Ross, if you could help me out this, uh, you you all met Ross. Ross was the the person that was uh, introducing everybody, um, and he's he's our uh, events and community manager. So when we do events, uh, Ross is the person really putting that together. So uh, do me a favor, give a give a your best emoji for Ross right now as a thank you for for him doing a lot of this legwork to put this together. If you can put a, a fun emoji for Ross, I uh, would really appreciate that. Uh, but Ross, could you do me a favor and put our Discord in the chat as well? Uh, so anybody can join the Discord um, uh, if they want to. And um, uh, you know, we have some really good community events that we're doing um, continuously. We've been hosting events um, you know, twice a week for the last um, you know, several months. Um, and, and like I said, we've been doing in-person events for a really long time. Uh, we've held, hold, held five total in 
person conferences, and then we even had uh, chapters in different cities. We will be um, having our next conference in May uh, in Seattle, uh, and it's going to be about Web3 in general. So with that, um, I am technically uh, going to be your first speaker today. Um, and so what we're going to talk about is NFTs for brands. And essentially what I'm going to do is just help level set the room a little bit for folks. Um, and uh, so I'm going to go straight into present mode. Um, Ross, can you do me a favor and can you text me personally to let me know that um, uh, you can see my screen? um overall and maybe i just have to do it uh this way oh wait here we go there we go okay great all right so hopefully i have this i'm gonna switch back real quick if, if ross text me if you can see my screen i'm hoping people can see my screen and i think you can great looking good all right so here is to level set and i got about 15 minutes to do this before we get to our next speaker who's gonna be talking about metaverse and brands so um we're going to talk about how brands um, can think about NFTs and you know how it can increase revenue, how can they can gain new customers, and how they can build brand loyalty and awareness. So, what is an NFT? Um, you, you you might have heard of NFT so far. So last year, um, I think you know while NFTs have been going on for a long time before this, um, what really re one of the call it shoes to drop that started to create attention was Beeple uh, when he sold an NFT artwork for $69 million. And what it was, was a, a series of, of video, short videos of himself uh, over, um, I think it was a 13 year period of time, or it was a long period of time. And he put it together into one big digital file. Um, you know, Beeple has gone on to sell some other really interesting uh, artwork as well. He did this really interesting physical piece that had, that had, um, it was like a man uh, or a person walking um, in a you know space-like environment. It was pretty interesting. Uh, Visa, so credit card company, they bought a CryptoPunk over the summer for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And when they bought it, one of the reasons they said they bought it was they were thinking of this as an artifact, as something that you know they can keep onto, like a museum item. Um, also, you know, uh, probably a little bit as an investment. But one of the main reasons is it ended up being a really interesting marketing opportunity for them overall. So the, the amount of, of uh, attention that they received for $150,000 farly outweighed that cost. So meaning if they wanted to have that brand lift by spending on advertisements, for example, they, it would have been in the, in the tens of millions. So them being able to do that became really interesting for multiple reasons. And plus Visa has their own cryptocurrency division, et cetera. Um, and last is, you know, you have a bunch of athletes and artists and musicians um, buying uh, PFP projects. Steph Curry bought a board eight for 180K. Uh, Eminem bought a board eight. Uh, you have uh, influencers and um, artists buying uh, crypto punks, uh, World of Women, um, Cool Cats, you know, all these various PFP projects that uh, they each have done a really good job of building up community and, um, you know, kind of creating this place where people want to be. So let's just break this down and start from the beginning. What is non fungible? What's a non fungible token? Or, and what does non fungible mean? So we're going to start out with what fungible mean first. So fungible basically means it's it's replaceable in nature due to its likeness. So um, essentially, if I have a dollar and you have a dollar and we switch these dollars, we don't necessarily care, right? There, there's no really reason uh, for me to mind us switching dollars or, you know, Bitcoins for that matter or uh, ETH tokens. Um, so... Uh, if you if you swap these currencies that are fungible, for the most part, you wouldn't care. Maybe you might say like, oh, well, this dollar is worth more because it's rare. That's a unique circumstance, of course. Um, but in, in, in its principle, fungible means, you know, hey, a dollar is the same as any other dollar. Now, non-fungible is something that's unique. It's one of a kind. It's one of. So when we think about the Mona Lisa and uh, the Marilyn Monroe by Warhol, these are both amazing works of art. They're, they both feature women, uh, but they're definitely very different, done in different eras, done in different styles. Um, so, so these are non-fungible. They might even have the same 
even if hypothetically they were worth the same amount of money, that doesn't mean that they hold the same value overall. They're, they're unique overall. So both art, um, but they hold different value. Now, uh, we'll get into this further, but when non-fungible tokens were created, they weren't created to solve this art problem. They were more created in the sense of the need to having non-fungible um, utility overall. So let's talk about what a token is. So a token serves as an asset or a unit of measure within a monetized value often residing on a blockchain. For if anybody here is a developer um, themselves, you know, this probably is makes a little bit more sense to you than others. But um, also when you send packets of information from a programming standpoint, typically you send tokens of information. It's not the same as, you know, cryptocurrency token, of course, but that's also a way to sort of think about this. So um, the most common token is the Ethereum ERC-20 uh, token. Um, so um, back in, call it 2013, 14, 15, uh, around there, I can't remember the exact date, uh, Ethereum started to come out. And Ethereum was essentially created as, call it a developer type of blockchain. So um, you had uh, ICOs come up uh, that created different um, blockchain uh, projects uh, based off of uh, Ethereum ERC-20 tokens. Um, but then you also have things um, that that really uh, have taken off in that regard. Even stable coins are often uh, as an ERC-20. Uh, Ethereum tokens are standard, allow for anyone to create their own cryptocurrency. Um, of course, there are other blockchains um, out there now. Uh, there's layer ones and layer twos. We won't really get into that part. Um, but what I wanted to, because this being the main standard, is the non-fungible token. So similar to a crypto token, yet used to store more information and uniquely store that information. So there's the ERC-721 standard, which that is focused on non-fungible fungibility um, overall. And, and one of the things I always like to clarify is that when um, the, the, that token standard was created, it wasn't like there was this pent-up demand for selling digital art um, that was unique. Um, there was pent up demand for how do we create unique tokens or unique fungibility. And so it just so happened that the art space um, is really what took off, you know, for that token standard uh, overall. So the information about the NFT known as metadata describes the elements of the NFT, such as description, ownership and rules. Here's where sometimes people get confused when they think of NFT. They think of NFT as strictly like the JPEG or the PNG or the image, when in reality, that's not even the NFT. The NFT is really everything behind that. So all that metadata, the information, the, the token ID, you know, how that's stored. And then that image is what's representing uh, the, that in, in essentially the code, right? That, that's, that's what's being presented. So it is, it is and it isn't in, in that regard. Um, so, you know, as we mentioned, the primary ones are 721, 1155, but that being said is, you know, several of the layer two protocols, um, or blockchains that are what is called EVM compatible, EVM is Ethereum virtual machine compatible, um, you know, have created opportunities for NFTs within themselves. So Avalanche and, and Polygon and, um, um, uh, Harmony and, and, and there, there's several other EVM compatible NFTs. Uh, to clarify, Solana um, does have a smart contract standard and they do, you can mint NFTs on Solana, but it's not EVM compatible. They have their own um, code. Um, the, sorry, they, they use Rust instead of Solidity. Uh, and so, like I said here, there are alternatives to support the NFTs. Um, so the current, as we mentioned, the current use case is artists, right? So, so Damien Hurst did this really interesting drop called The Currency, where he had a physical piece and he had a digital piece. And basically, um, when you purchase the NFT, you could decide in one year if you wanted to keep the physical piece or keep the digital piece. And you had to burn, essentially, or get rid of the other. Uh, Grimes, um, the former partner of uh, Elon Musk, you know, she did this really short video animation with music and she's a musician. And then of course we have these collectibles, like these, you know, avatar um, PFP type projects. Those are, have been the primary cases, but you know, brands are thinking about NFTs and have for some quite some time. So, um, you know, these are a couple brands that have gotten an NFT um, in one way, shape or form. So you have, um, uh, you you have the you know Charmin did this really interesting drop and and it was more to donate to charity um, you know Dunkaroos is an old 
uh, General Mills brand, um, and and they did an NFT drop to help um, kind of promote the brand overall. Um, uh, the 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 Budweiser they actually purchased their NFT from from the Rocket Project, for example. Um, and so on and so forth. There, you know, Pepsi has done an NFT drop with their microphones. Budweiser has been doing NFT drops. Home Depot, um, you know, have, you have a lot of these, um, you know, food and, and uh, brands. I guess Home Depot is not a food brand, of course. Um, you know, doing NFTs, and and we get approached by um, CPG brands all the time. Uh, you know, thinking about this, and and what we always say is the key is. You can think of a NFT drop for a brand in two ways. Is this going to be a Super Bowl like event? So meaning you're going to drive a lot of attention to one single thing and, you know, kind of have this be like a big advertising push. So that's one way. Or is this going to be a part of your every day? So let's use Pringles in this example here. So if Pringles does one NFT and they build a lot of attention to it and they get some publicity out of that, that's fun. That's great. But what's more interesting is if Pringles starts allowing people to collect NFTs um, for proof of purchase or to collect NFTs that, you know, um, you know, give them access to, you know, more Pringles or create the Pringles Club. Um, or if, you know, for every 10 NFTs, you get access to XYZ or maybe you get a promotion, um, you know, you open the Pringles Club and there's um, um, a QR code and that gets you something, right? So how do you think about NFTs in the long term? Fashion brands have been using NS NFTs as well. DKNY, they did a simple, um, uh, call it logo NFT. Uh, Dolce & Gabbana, they had a NFT that was based on um, on fashion art. They, they did about nine, no, sorry, $6 million in sales on nine uh, NFTs. And then Gucci ended up doing, a. they turned one of their uh, fashion movies uh, into an NFT. So this is interesting, right? Again, but these are kind of use cases that are outside of the norm of how a brand operates. You know, brands sell products, they sell goods, they sell multiple merchandises. So for Dolce & Gabbana to sell nine NFTs for $6 million, while that might feel interesting from a revenue standpoint, it's not necessarily like moving the needle with their customer base overall. And so, you know, we believe the, the benefit really is to how do you make Dolce & Gabbana sell, you know, 100,000 NFTs of a product line or, you know, the same volume that they sell with re regular products or their physical products. So from an NFT standpoint for brands, you know, they can think about this as merchandise. Um, if you think about it as merchandise, that means that you can sell this NFT for a dollar, you can give it away for free, you can sell it away for a million dollars, you have it fit within the way your brand operates. So that's one way to look at it. And, and I believe that's the way to look at this in the long term sustainable way. Um, the other way is in a collector's items. That's kind of more similar to how PFPs work and, and some of these avatar projects. Um, but you look, there's definitely collector pieces of fashion, collector pieces of, you know, people collect cans, these sort of things prizes giving someone hey thanks so much you won this prize for you know being a great customer or a raffle etc having it be membership and loyalty so having provide access to an event or access to um, content or access to um, you know a particular drop of fashion or clothes a simple ticket stub you know how many people said that they went to woodstock uh, and probably didn't you know, having that ticket stuff. And then last is moments. So we, we've heard about uh, NF, N, NBA Top Shot, and that's done really, really well. Well, imagine being a, getting a moment from an event that you actually were present at, you know, going to uh, a, a Beyonce concert and being able to purchase a moment from that exact concert. You know, there starts to be these really interesting things for brands to think about. So the market opportunity is really big for brands overall um, in this. And so right now, to call it last year or the year before, I should say that overall art market was about 50 billion. Um, last year in 2021, uh, there was about 17 billion um, in NFT sales. And so, you know, when you think about how brands operate in the e-commerce function, a trillion dollars, once brands start thinking about NFTs, it really becomes an interesting opportunity for them. So I'm going to run through these last ones super quick so that way we can get to our next speaker. But um, again, we're talking in a high level here. There's essentially three main personas when it comes to NFTs. You have your artists, you have your buyers, and you have your marketplaces. And so the artists are the creators. They're the ones putting this all together. And so artists can even be music or film, et cetera. But these are the ones, you know, putting this great work together. 
um, you have the buyer, the person that's collecting this overall and, um, you know, whether they collect it, whether they want to use it, um, how, how they think through it. And then you have the marketplaces where people are often going to purchase these things. Um, we see a world where brands actually, uh, instead of sending people to a marketplace, they actually have that take place in their environment. So typically you have to you know, go to Coinbase or some place to find Ethereum or whatever cryptocurrency you need. You load it into a MetaMask or another type of wallet, and that's how you're able to purchase your NFT. Um, so we see brands being able to have NFTs take place on their site. Uh, so what NIFMIT has done just for a short plug is we have an interoperability into the brand's e-commerce so that they can sell the NFT directly on their platform. We want the brand to think of NFTs like merchandise, like inventory. Um, so yeah, just keeping those customers close overall. Um, so, so yeah, so this is what we got for when it comes to how NFTs and brands, hopefully this is a good uh, overview of how people can uh, think about this. Uh, feel free to message me throughout the day or message our team if you're interested in thinking about how you can get NFTs involved uh, for your brand uh, overall. And so I'm going to stop sharing and come back over here. It's, it's cool to see those comments. Um, so we're going to get, I, I went a little bit long, but we're going to go to our, our next speaker here shortly. Um, but if you um, if you have any questions, feel free. Actually, I'll answer a couple questions really quickly. Does anybody have a quick question that I can answer? If not, I will. And Ross, can you let me know, is, is Chris ready to go? Cool, perfect. All right, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and move on. We'll have some time later to the day to answer this. Um, I'm going to um, head back and, and we'll get Chris going. So thank you, everybody. I'll put some information here in the side while um, Mike and Chris uh, are welcomed. And um, really appreciate you all being here today. Again, feel free to share this out with your friends.